Hi, this is Rabat Khan and welcome to lecture 5.4.1, which is a continuation of finding time complexity of recursive problems. In this particular lecture, we are going to find out the time complexity of Fibonacci series. So let's get started. So if you remember the Fibonacci series, the first two numbers or the values of the first two terms are fixed. From the third term, this value is the summation of the previous two values. So again, 3 is the summation of the previous two values, 2 and 1. So this is term number 1. So let's say term. This is term number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, and goes on till n. So looking at the series, we can say that the value of some term of any or the value of any term is the summation of, or we can say the Fibonacci of any term let's say any term is the summation of the Fibonacci of the previous two terms. So the Fibonacci of the seventh term is 13. And 13 is the summation of the Fibonacci of the 6th term, which is 8. And the Fibonacci of the 5th term, which is 5. So if we add them up, we get 13. So in short, we can write Fibonacci of the 7th term, 7, equals the Fibonacci of the 6th term plus Fibonacci of the set of the fifth term. Now, if if we have to generalize, we can say that Fibonacci of any number n is nothing but the summation of the Fibonacci of the n minus one term plus the Fibonacci of n minus two term. So you can see this is. The definition of Fibonacci is recursive by nature. Therefore, we can solve this in recursion. So let's solve it and let's find out what is the time complexity. So from the previous slide, we get Fibonacci of n equals Fibonacci of n minus 1 plus the Fibonacci of n minus 2. And this is the recurrence equation and we do some work like we have the base case check we have this summation so all these operations take constant amount of time so we can say we go of one now in the previous lecture we saw how to find the time complexity of factorial where n was broken down into two pieces of size one and n minus one and we applied recursion on one of the subproblems. This Fibonacci is a little different where the Fib where the problem n is breaking down into two subproblems, n minus one and n minus two, but we are applying recursion on both the subproblems. Okay. Therefore, this work done over here is applied on both the subproblems. So let us draw what happens here. So let's look at a detailed pictorial view. So we have Fibonacci of n initially. And this breaks down into two subproblems of size n minus 1 and of size n minus 2. And over here we do the work done, which is constant amount of time 
Now this pro this sub problem is again sent to T or or T uh, T is called again with this sub problem and T is called again with this sub problem and this breaks down to two more sub problems of n minus two and n minus three and this also breaks down into n minus three and n minus four two more sub problems so the same work done is applied over here so we can say one and we can also say one over here so at this step the amount of work done is two now at this step again recursion will be applied and from each sub problem there will be two more sub problems and there will be one two three and four work done because a uh, time uh, constant amount of work done on each sub problem okay and this work done is dependent on uh, the recursive call okay so i cannot just simply say constant this constant is dependent on the recursive call or by or by uh, the factor how this sub problem is getting smaller so let's say this is step one so let's count the number of steps so this is step one so at step one my work done is one at step two my work done in the entire step is two at step let's say step number zero so let's say step number zero for for making a life easier so zero one let's say is two so at step two we have work done of four and let's say when we reach the base case this is step number k and if you look carefully, this work then is nothing but two power number of steps. So over here we have two power zero, we get one. We get we have two power one, we get two. So at the last step or the step or at step k, the number of work done will be two to the power k. Now the time complexity of Fibonacci is basically summation of the work done at each step. So what I have to do is, so let's go to a fresh slide. So what I have to do is, I have to add them, add this column, right? So we have to add this column. Now how to find or how to get the exact time complexity. At first we need to find the value of k in terms of n. Okay, now there are two ways to solve this problem. If you look carefully, this is a geometric progression series where I have two so over here I have so I have one over here, I have two over here, four, eight, up to two to the power k. And we know the sum of n terms, or in this or in this case, sum of k terms would be the first term times r to the power k minus 1 by r minus 1 so a equals 1 so we can write 1 times and r equals 2 r is nothing but common ratio common ratio is a division between the second term 
by the first term where we get 2 over here. So we have 2 to the power k here, minus 1, and r minus 1 is 1. So 2 power k minus 1. And we have seen from the previous lecture that we have to find k in terms of n. Now how to find k? Now if I look at this tree, we see that at step number k, when we reach the base case, the value is 1, right? And we also know that the at base case, okay, let me write it over here. At base case, the problem size is 1. So n equals 1. So tn means t1. And we know when the problem size is 1, the work done on this smallest unit is also 1. And there is no more function call. So we can write t of 1 equals 1. Now from the tree again, we see that this portion, n minus 1, n minus 2, this portion, is nothing but n minus k, right? So n minus steps. So, so we, over here we have n minus 0. We have n minus 1 here because this is step number 1. At step number 2 over here, I have n minus 2. So we can write this 1 is nothing but n minus k. So we can write t n minus k equals 1. And we also know that n minus k is the base case. Therefore, n minus k here is also 1. Therefore, k equals n. Now what we have to do is we have to replace this k with n and what we get is 2 to the power n minus 1 and we know we can ignore this and finally the time complexity of solving Fibonacci using recursion is 2 times n now this is huge right in future when we will study about dynamic programming we will see that this exponential time complexity can be reduced down to linear with the help of memoization. And this is also an answer to the question whether all problems are solvable using divide and conquer. Okay, we know that divide and conquer, are, or we will see that divide and conquer is a very powerful problem solving technique. But not, all, <clears throat> but not all problems can be solved or will be helpful if we solve using divide and conquer. And Fibonacci is one of them. Okay, that's it for, uh, that's it in this lecture. So in the next lectures, we are going to look at a few more examples. Thank you.